The credit crisis or the financial crisis that uh, happened in September and which is still unfurling as we speak uh, in early part of October, um, I would say that the cause of this lies almost six to seven years ago. Uh, in the wake of 9-11, uh, when Fed was cutting rates, they dramatically cut the interest rates to stave off uh, a deflationary cycle or, or the crisis at that point. And the Fed uh, funds rate, which is the benchmark rate for, for so-called price of money, was down to almost 1%. And it stayed at those low levels for almost three years. So as you can imagine, when something is cheap, uh, people use it a lot. And our financial institutions, investment banks, uh, borrowed a lot of this cheap money. And to make money, they uh, lent it outside. For example, Goldman Sachs balance sheet almost went up from 400 billion to almost 1200 billion over these four or five years. And a similar secular increase was seen in almost all uh, financial institutions. The leverage ratios, which is, for every dollar of equity, how much debt you have, went up from the range of about 15 and 20 to, to, to more than 30. The biggest effect of this, uh, this easy money was seen in the housing market, where the lending standards sort of kept going uh, downhill and uh, the borrower quality deteriorated. Some of it had to do with the, the structure that we had in terms of origination, a lot of uh, mortgage lending was outsourced to brokers who were paid for con just getting a, putting a loan together rather than worrying about if a borrower was going to default or not. And uh, back in 2005, when the Fed interest rates started going up, many of these mortgages were adjustable rate mortgages. And as the interest rate goes up, already stretched uh, borrowers simply could not make these payments. So you had defaults going on. There was also this pernicious effect that we are still seeing and which is still not out completely. Uh, a fairly large number of these mortgages appear to have been done fraudulently because literally many of the, the mortgages that were done in the very last year went into default immediately. That is, almost no payments were made. So how is that related to the credit market? As these defaults have increased, many of the financial institutions were also investors in these mortgages. So you can imagine that suddenly the asset side of your balance sheet, you own all these mortgages, people start uh, defaulting on them. Suddenly your balance sheet, asset side starts deteriorating. This creates a hole on the other side of the balance sheet. You don't have enough capital. You are already very leveraged. And the final straw is, when the faith of the market disappears, when there's a crisis of confidence, when enough people believe that Lehman doesn't have, have enough capital, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. People start pulling money out. This leads to, uh, to panic, loss of confidence. And literally the third week of September was when we saw this full-blown. On Monday, Lehman files for bankruptcy. And it, it was this chain reaction that, that sent shivers through the uh, credit markets. Suddenly you would have um, a money market fund that owned a lot of Lehman's debt, lose a lot of money because Lehman went under, so all the, the debt that this, uh, this money market fund had was worthless. Suddenly money market funds were no longer safe, which were always considered very, very safe. In a single day, almost $150 billion worth of money was pulled out of money market. Uh, you had crisis of confidence in terms of brokers to all these investment banks. Within a week, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley were looking like they would be the next pieces that would fall because people were pulling their money out of them because they were no longer confident. So this is how the exact nitty-gritty in the last couple of weeks it has, it has happened. But the basis of this is just extensive uh, speculation in housing, which was in turn led by, by cheap money. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the $700 billion uh, plan that has been passed by the Congress and signed by President Bush uh, almost overnight into law. As an economist, the key piece of this legislation is it tries to do two things. First is, it 
it tries to make a market that is illiquid. All these mortgages, currently there's no price for them. No one is willing to put any price on them because they don't know how much they are worth. The first thing that this, this law tries to do is by pumping liquidity into this market, get this market unglued. Let's have some people putting some prices on this and if no one would step forward then treasury would. Second piece that this legislation tries to do is capitalize the banks. So hopefully if these, these assets are bought at a price that is sufficiently high enough that many of the financial institutions which are currently looking at depleted balance sheets would be able to have a healthier and stronger balance sheet. So those are the two main uh, issues that this, this, this plan addresses. The mechanics of how it is going to do it is um, laid out in some detail, but it's, it's going to be a work in process as it worked out. Very broadly, Treasury is going to appoint asset managers. Uh, these are people who can presumably price, evaluate these securities, and they would buy them on behalf of the government. Hope is that in the long run, government would actually come out ahead or at least not lose too much of the money. Uh, mechanisms that are being proposed are reverse auctions in which, as the name suggests, government would open up the office and it, it, would, it would invite anyone who has these assets to come and offer them. And reverse auction is in a regular auction the price goes up, the highest bidder gets the, the, the bid. Reverse auction is you're trying to sell and if I have a mortgage and Citibank has a mortgage and Wells Fargo have a mortgage, we come and we say we are willing to sell 80 cents at a dollar. Someone else comes, we have similar rated mortgage, we'll sell at 70 cents a dollar. So the auction works to the lowest price. So that is the, the mechanical um, me, uh, framework that is likely to be used. We held a town hall meeting uh, about a week ago in which we discussed the crisis, we went through what are some of the factors that have led us to where we are. Uh, we took some guesswork and predictions about where it is likely to be. As you can understand, it's, it's, it's a time of great anxiety for, for a lot of our students. Uh, some of the biggest recruiters for business schools are investment banks, financial institutions, and financial services companies. Uh, those are precisely the employers who are facing these very difficult times. Um, Business school, as well as, uh, by, by business school I mean the faculty, as well as the career management office, is, is responding to it in very urgent fashion. Uh, we have tried to reach out to alumni. We are holding a lot of alumni events uh, across the nation. Uh, we are also proactively seeking to increase the breadth of our recruiters. Uh, traditionally, recruiters which would only recruit one or two people would not be very uh, high in, in terms of priority because so much of the, the time and effort was aimed at our traditional recruiters who were very formal uh, associate programs and they would hire half a dozen to, to, to even more uh, students. Uh, but one thing has been to increase the breadth of, of uh, kind of employers we want to bring to our, our corporation, uh, to our, our school. Um, we are faculty uh, is, is actively uh, talking to the, uh, our alums uh, and trying to get a sense of what the recruitment needs are. Also, uh, we have to keep in mind that this, this crisis is not affecting every sector equally. Um, some big Fortune 500 corporations uh, like FedEx uh, who have been good recruiters here, uh, we hope to, to talk to them and, and say that this is a great opportunity. You get, you get to take a crack at a much deeper pool of applicants. applicants. So, so these are some of the things that we've been working on and hopefully we'll weather this.